notification from IRC on your, your phone or your iPad, it can do that. Or not, if you don't turn it on. So, cool. Um, awesome. So let me go ahead. Do we have someone who would be willing to share the agenda with the group? Actually, let me go ahead and I'll just go ahead and do that since I happen to be um, running today. Uh, for those of you who are new, I know we've got a lot of folks who are new to the call today, and I'm delighted to have you. Uh, normally, Frederick Kautz um, runs the meetings, and he's very good at it. So if it seems a little bit like I'm catching up, it's because usually we, we have really good meeting runners running the meetings. So one second while I share. Awesome. Cool. So um, this is, I just found out just before this meeting that Kyle wasn't going to be here. I thought he was running the meeting. So the agenda may be a little bit light today. We may have to make it up a bit as we go along. So quick agenda bashing first. Are there other things that people feel we should actually have on the agenda currently? Um, I was about to add one item, but I can do it right away as we uh, kindly speak speaking. I don't want to stall the meeting. Yeah, please feel free, folks, to add your items to now, the agenda. Yeah, I'm going to do it as we speak. Let's uh, go ahead and start discussing the other ones. The yeah, um, I would like to actually add the testing thing. I see Michael um, on the call, which sent your emails. So mm -hmm. can we look at the uh, the CNF uh, testing point? I don't know where it fits in the agenda, Day, uh, Ed. Uh, we absolutely can. Um, would you be willing to, to hum a few bars about that, Michael, and talk with Matrix about that, the VNF CNF testing? Yeah, we can we can talk a bit about that. That's fine. Cool. Um, right. Uh, cool. Awesome. Um, anything else that folks want to add to the agenda? Sorry. Um, can... I'm adding uh, interaction with uh, Kubernetes KTS network policy. Okay, cool, cool. Um, so are yeah, you, just adding. Yep, yep. Um, and we'll, 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 that's an interesting topic. So definitely we'll, we'll get there. Um, anything else before we start diving in? Cool. So um, ONS Europe is going on next week. And we do have a talk that um, Kyle and Frederick are doing. Um, I also expect there, I think there's an uncomfortable event that will be happening that involves network service mesh. And rumors are as soon as uh, Frederick hits the ground and finds a decent bar, uh, that there will be um, something put up about the traditional network service mesh happy hour. So if any of you guys are going to ONS Europe, there should definitely be lots of network service mesh stuff to engage with. And the place to go look for that is we have our network service mesh web page and we have an events section. And there's a page for ONS Europe that will be updated as more of the sort of supporting collateral and other things come online. So uh, do you expect to have, uh, you know, I'm arriving there on Tuesday. I have a talk on Thursday on, um, mm -hmm. on FDIO and, and Kubernetes. Um, uh, is there, do you expect um, the guys to actually have some sort of a meeting point that will be live all the time? Or what would be the best way to hook up apart from you know, IRC? But will there be some sort of continuous NSM right. thing going on or, or periodic daily or twice daily or, or something? I know what was discussed last week. I don't think there's a continuous track going on. Um, yeah. There's the talk that's being given. There is an unconference. Uh -huh being held and it's been put forth as an unconference topic to the unconference section of the program. And then um, they, they will, once they identify a bar, they will be talking about doing a network service mesh app PR. Um, just to give you some idea. Sorry, sorry, wait, wait, wait. So what is happening in the bar? What is happening in the bar? You mentioned, yeah, you said once they identify the, buy, the bar, there will be something happening, but your audio is being scrambled on my side. Uh -huh. So. Network service mesh happy hour. So let me sort of show you what oh, happened. Oh, okay. NSM happy hour. Okay. Right. So when we did the open source summit, you know, all the various supporting collateral went up. There was a happy hour that was held there. They captured frequently asked questions. 
Um, they haven't yet updated the event page off the network service mesh for that information yet, but that's all right. Okay, so there will be happy hour. So there will be a meet up point yep. in the bar, and it will be live every day. Or do you know? I expect it'll only be one happy hour for the event. Yeah, hopefully during the event, not before the event. Yeah, yeah, that's my expectation. So, okay, thank you. Um, so there are other events coming up. Um, we've got KubeCon coming up. I do expect that we'll be doing a lot at KubeCon for Network Service Mesh. I know a lot of people submitted talks, um, and I know that, that one of our major goals is to be able to demo Network Service Mesh at KubeCon. And there are several booths, both project and corporate, that would be very interested in having hosting such a demo in their booths. Cool. Um, so really quickly, we do actually have a GitHub project that we tr will typically use to sort of comb through the issues. So let's go take a quick look at that and see where we stand with issues. So um, on the to-dos, we have issues. So we've got the traditional X-Factor CNF. I, hope, I don't know how many folks are familiar with 12-factor apps, but um, one of the things we've identified is as we gain operational experience, we need something like that for CNFs that sort of describes, okay, if you want to make a cloud native CNF, this is what it looks like. Um, the migrating of errors to go errors, Frederick has got that in progress. Um, we have an ongoing conversation about becoming a Kubernetes working group. That's been stalling a little bit as we've been sort of rushing forward with development. But one of the things that we've got going on is trying to figure out what is the proper formal home. When we went and we asked Kubernetes SIG networking, they suggested we become a Kubernetes working group. So Ed, you said it's been stalling. Is it because lack of um, interacting with the Kubernetes community or they're pushing back? I mean, which side is the stalling? Uh, so the, the, the stalling basically comes back to, we're trying to draft the proper set of collateral to so bring the proposal to Kubernetes working group. Um, and in the course of trying to draft that, one of the things that's come back, and this is where it gets to be a little interesting, is SIG Network would like us to be a Kubernetes working group. Kubernetes likes us, but they're trying to make working groups just be about producing spec docs. And of course, we're producing code. So there's a little bit of confusion as to how that sorts out. OK, I was just curious. Yep. No, generally, the Kubernetes community could not possibly have been more supportive of us. <clears throat> um, so, so, so Ed, just. If working groups do specs, who does the code? Yeah, so in, in principle, the code gets done in SIGs. Okay. Um, but I'm, I'm, you know, again, the, it's, it's not clear how all this settles out because one of the things that, that SIG Network was very happy about was that we were orthogonal, we didn't need changes in existing Kubernetes. But that also means that we don't necessarily fit in quite the normal way as a Kubernetes SIG. So, uh, effectively, we're doing things they like, the result of which is that their process no longer is a great fit. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so, But interestingly, um, uh, for example, the resource management working group actually produces code. So I think it's not probably a standard rule. I know that for sure. Oh, so no, it's, uh, I, participating. I, totally, I totally agree with you about that. I think what, what part of what's happening is they literally had no standards for working groups before. And so, and now they're, they're trying to write the standards and one of the standards that's being put forth is that working groups don't produce code. So it's all gotten sufficiently weird that, that what's happened is what happens normally in these situations, which is developers just go and write code because that's more fun than, than wandering around writing documents. So we should probably get back on that. Cool. Um, so there's efforts that's going on around documentation of the structure. I think that's actually some of these I think should be closed out. Like the Go errors, I think has been done. The documentation infrastructure, I think we do have docs on the website. Um, the how to get a privileged uh, container, um, I don't know if that's been done. The stop relying on host name to identify pod. I need to find out what was going on there with that with Frederick. Um, Ah, so there's also, and this gets back to, and I think we're missing a lot of the Volk folks because they're en route to ONS as well. Actually, we have Watson here. So Watson, do you know what's going on with the uh, support CNF, uh, CNCF CNF project? 
did you guys get together the kinds of stuff that you needed us to do or? I think um, Taylor's uh, still trying to put together. It's really just going to be uh, end up being an update for Dan uh, for CNC. Um, yeah, for the CNCF. So, okay. um, yeah. Cool. Um, and then, John, the separate out concerns for the audiences of NSM to make it more accessible. Did you have some particular thoughts on this? Let me go ahead and open that one since you're here to speak to it. Yeah, I kind of as I said there. There's, I think there's three audiences we're looking at. One is people developing the NSM framework code and APIs. Then people developing, you know, plugins. I.e., here is a a network service for you know IPsec or distributed switch. And then there's people who just use this. We say, oh, there's a distributed switch out there. Good, I can just plug it in. And it kind of goes to some of, you, some of your presentations about the, the end user who says, oh, I want this, and I don't want to know what what and two did to, to make this happen. Just give me enough um, information to do this. And I think those three audiences need to figure out how to speak to them separately. And I think, yeah, we had some discussions before about the current um, code base, the way that's laid out. It mixes it all together. You can yeah. piece it, you can piece it you can piece it together if I go, get on IRC and ask you or um, Kyle or um, Frederick they can, or Sergey they can point me to where to look. But it's not a you know how how do I enter this for one of those three points? Okay, Does that make sense. No, that makes that makes total sense, and um, I, I it sounds like it's it's sort of two things you're suggesting. One is um, documentation more towards those three audiences, and then the other one is um, perhaps you know moving the code base around a little bit so it's it's set up a little bit better for consumption by those three audiences. Yeah, if I wanted to drop a plugin, I don't want to have to touch any of the framework code or any of the directories where the framework code exists because. I don't want to. I don't want to mess it up. Yeah. <laughs> no, when you say a plugin, do you mean? Are you talking about writing a network service endpoint? Because you mentioned earlier. Yes. Yeah. That, if I want to take what um, Sergio did to his test data plane, uh -huh. his test data plane, I think, touches you know four or five directories in the mm -hmm. current tree, and all those directories are a couple of those directories are part of the core NSM framework. Ah. Uh, okay. So it would be nice to have a different way. So I, when I enter the code base and I drop a PR and say, here, here's a new PR, here's you know, a distributed switch, everybody knows it's not affected any of the existing code. Mm -hmm. And then I also drop in to say, oh, if you want to use this distributed switch, here is you know, the, the YAML file or the YAML documentation to go and do that. Yeah, so you're, you're almost asking for like a, an NSE directory. I know you're working on something like this as well, Tom. Well, I mean, uh, the data plane is not a great example is because uh, basically we haven't finalized that uh, the, uh, yet the um, uh, protocol or protobuf to talk to the data plane. So that's why there is a, a kind of a simple data plane protobufs in the uh, plugin tree or in the NSM package APIs. Uh, eventually it will go away or it will stay, but it will be common for every, th for every data plane plugin. So basically you will not need to do any changes there as long as that protobuf uh, gives you what you want for your NSC or a data plane or whatever you develop uh, extra to the framework. Yeah, I'm not commenting where we are just now. It's more just saying this is directionally where I think we just think uh, about going. I, I think that's actually exactly right because I think what we would like to be able to do is have a clear place and a clear procedure whereby people can contribute a data plane or a network service endpoint um, to, um, you know, and, and, and also sort of clear traditions as to then how those get consumed by people so that it gets to be really, really easy for people to contribute those components because those should be relatively modular components. And then you know, even, even beyond that, we may also want to offer uh, places for people to contribute um, ENSMs, external NSMs, or PNSMs, proxy NSMs, to do some of the more sophisticated things. 
But I, I think some of that's going to have to emerge as we sort out a little bit some of the APIs between those layers in the system. Uh, and we're still figuring some of that out. Yeah, I, I know I figured out it. Maybe it's just, but I think if, if you set the kind of goals as how we want to evolve, and, and I put down those three, three audiences, feel free to change them, modify them. I'm, I'm not saying they're the, the be all and end all, but I think we should think about how to address different audiences. Uh, uh, Ed, uh, one of the, uh, maybe one thing that could help, like we have uh, scripts to deploy NSM in the CI environment but we have very little uh, how to deploy NSM in the, in the product or in the lab environment. So maybe something like a Helm chart, which would go and deploy all the required pieces could help people to consume it easier. Mm -hmm. No, I think that would probably also be useful. So definitely, I mean, you, you definitely want consumption to be as easy as humanly possible. So I, I, I appreciate you bringing this up. John, I think it's actually exactly where we want to go. We just have to get from here to there. Um, John, this is actually a very good one. So just was thinking on the API, should we also talk about um, other uh, relevant external APIs such as Kubernetes network policy? I mean, essentially at that point, then the audience is really looking at a big picture, right? Beyond NSM. So we, we, we do have that on the agenda. Let me bounce back because we're almost finished running through the, the Kanban board. And then we can come back to that on the, the main agenda if that's cool with you. Is that okay, Ronki? Yeah, oh no, perfect. You know, I, I was also, in, in, I was not pushing for my agenda to bid. So all I was saying was like when, in, in, when you have the context of APIs, then people also want to, know the bigger picture, right? So and what is NSM API versus Kubernetes network policy? And you know, when we get there, I also talk about the service mesh itself. So there is a little bit of overlap there, how this is all coming together, right? Sort of people are interested when you're looking at APIs, right? So that's what I meant. Totally, cool. All right then, so um, then we've got the L2 forwarding example, uh, forwarding with the VPP example. Tom, I know you've been working on this as a network server. Yeah, I don't have a pull request yet. Um, I have, have been looking at the API doc that Sergey prepared and merged and um, looking at, uh, so I'm looking at two things simultaneously. What, and this is relevant to the discussion that we've just been having the last 10 minutes. Well, what additions to the API doc do we need to deploy, if not quite data plane, something focused on the low level delivery um, of, the, of the actual resource that the NSM endpoint needs to, in order to construct this L2 forwarding plane. Yeah. Um, and secondly, and we have some of that definition, but there's a few things that are, are missing or could, could be augmented. And one of the things I was thinking about was the possibility of there's other communities working and, and uh, with CRDs and like Intel is developing apparently, um, I know they're not all yet there, but I saw them in some referred to in some preliminary slides for another project that's working on Kubernetes. And they're developing CRDs for core pinning, for uh, things that you, you would need for um, SRIOV or more for uh, BM focused stuff and whether we need we have to have a way since we're we're orchestrating this through NSM to specify what what resources or or coordinate the resources that the NSC provides and whether that NSC can can, can utilize in its in the um, in the daemon set or the init container the uh, the standing up of some of these CRD resources and whether and how much of that information we need, yep, yep. you know, propagating through NSM. So I've been kind of thinking about that as well. So oh. this, is, this is really like, to do this really requires both the code and some um, adjustments of the protocol. And, you know, ultimately I'll, 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 I'll get this done and we, it may end up being something like what Sergey did and that it would be part of the tree and not really a clean division 
of of leveraging other CRDs and so on and so forth in EMC. I'm sorry, go ahead. One thing I think we have to be really cautious about, because I've been attending the resource management SIG quite a lot, a resource management working group quite a lot, and sort of wandering around through that stuff. Um, and there, there's a bunch of things we will eventually want to get to in terms of pneumo zones and that kind of stuff that are going to be important. Um, but the only one of those proposals right now that has actually been accepted in any way, shape, or form has been the CPU pinning proposal. Um, and that one actually is very, doesn't have any CRDs associated with it really. So you know, there's not a lot to do there. I think we need to presume on the presumption that the, some of those numerous sorts of problems are going to need to be solved at some point, but that they're going to be solved in the context of the resource management working group in the same way, rather than us inventing our own solutions to them. You know, so for example, when I schedule an NSC and I want to do you know, core pinning, if all I really want to do is core pinning and I'm not associated to any particular hardware, right, um, then that, that's already there. If I would like to consume SRIOV and therefore I want to be in a particular NUMA zone, there's active debate about what the right way to do that is, but that's going to be worked out in the context of resource management as part of how the pod spec works. So that's not something we would manage ourselves directly. That would have to do with how you deploy the pod for your NSC. Yeah, exactly. So basically, uh, it, these two can uh, coexist in parallel. Uh, one aspect provides you the resources that you need. So that could be a, another CRD, uh, another controller that deals with what port requests in terms of the performance or CPU, uh, CPU pinning or other things. And we provide just the kind of a network plug. I mean, we sh uh, th these are two separate uh, aspects, I think, and I, it would be easier and more clean to keep them separate. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, so, but what, uh, uh, and that's what I was hoping I would hear. Um, and there seems to be general agreement on that is uh, that we, we leverage what's being done elsewhere in the KAS community. But um, I think it's, it's I, I just, uh, I'm trying to, to, to think this through and how much I need to actually make a concrete, because part of this effort is to make a concrete example that will actually forward packets. So I guess if worst comes to worst, we'll just hard code some configuration stuff in the example in the, um, you know, um, in the code just to, you know, uh, set up the detail. For example, for VPP, just set up the details of configuring the VPP, v configuring VPP in the pod. Okay. I mean, one, one other thing that we may want to, um, that, we, that I would actually encourage folks to do is to get more involved in the resource management working group. Yeah. Um, there, there's a lot of folks in the resource management working group who are very, very smart about Kubernetes and cloud native. And there are some folks showing up who are very smart about networking. Um, but you don't have a bunch of people there who are actually really have this sort of taste across both. And we, we are blessed to have a lot of those people participating in our community. And so I, I think it's helpful for us to cross pollinate there a little bit, um, you know, just so that we can actually represent, okay, yeah, we, we really are working on network things and we really are trying to do it the cloud native way and, you know, you know represent our viewpoint. Yeah, I think, I think so. And I think there may be, uh, I'd be happy to do that. And I think part of what I'm trying to do naturally feeds into that. Uh, so if you could put a, a, a thing in the chat, and I think there's at least one person here who's also involved in the Multis project, and I don't know whether they're taking the same approach or not, but they, in some ways they may be, um, if, if anybody would want to want to comment on that. I know we're fundamentally different from Multis, but some of the bottom level uh, stuff in terms of the re resource definitions are, are I think, Possibly shared. So I think you're absolutely right. We all have, we all yeah, have. I think um, this is extremely well said. So in fact, I was a participant in resource management working group like almost six months back. Then I, have, I got into other things. But yeah, well said. And in fact, we are looking at uh, the layer three cache partitioning as sort of a advanced resource management construct, but we tabled it in a future. That could also be useful for network functions. But yeah, I think this is spot on. What's, what's, the, uh, what's the, sorry, uh, outco question. Um, what is the, uh, the, the use case driving the LLC partitioning? So uh, this is essentially a higher degree of performance and isolation for network functions. So basically 
uh, if you have sort of a network function uh, which wants uh, some guarantees, say as an example, 5G, uh, you know, packet processing function, right? Uh, you know, UPF, right? And then you have some other network function or any other workload which is more best effort, right? So the idea is basically uh, you can create some partitions for the cache. So basically you dole out only a section of the cache for the uh, best effort uh, workload, right? Whereas yeah. the, uh, uh, the, the guaranteed network function can the uh, entire, uh, you know, cache. Okay, and who is managing the uh, this allocation in the dynamic? So yeah, exactly. So that is the part uh, yes. which is still work in progress in the resource management group. Mm -hmm. So essentially, mm -hmm. the idea was make uh, so you'll be pre-constructing those cache partitionings and then let the kubelet manage it, right? So you it's still work in progress. I'm very much interested in the detail. Um, would you mind sending me a pointer to this resource management group activity so I can uh, educate myself? Thank you. Yeah, and I, oh, yeah. I'm interested in that as well, Sergey. So on the basis of all of yours and, uh, and, and Ed's. Can you do us a favor and add that to the meeting minutes? Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 I'll, I'll, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Because, I mean, the, the, and, uh, do, we, do we already have uh, an activity or uh, this, uh, you know, the, the work stream within NSM uh, uh, tracking that? Because I think that would be an extremely... Um, uh, interesting not, uh, area but i would love to have it because among other things there there are some things that there are some really good things happening in the resource management working group conversations but some of them like that is telling me don't go far enough so for example the conversations around the numa manager they would work yeah. just fine if you're if you're a pod that is going to grab a single yeah. nick but if you're grabbing grabbing multiple nicks across multiple luma zones you may have asymmetrical distribution of the, the cores you want there for like they, they literally have no story for that. And I think that's going to be Well, right, well right. what, I, what I'm thinking of is like, what about the circumstances? And I, I don't want to sound like our project is tied or, or prejudiced in favor of VPP in any way, but I have to have an example to talk about the concrete. If I'm asking for a port on a data plane and I'm, I'm the, the first one to do it, my NSC, I may actually configure other that have to configure the that the VPP um, and and but someone else may be able to share the same configuration if they're also like looking at a at a um, at the at the same at the same data plane and they may not know that they're looking at the same data plane all they're looking for is a high level service that or or just a layer two connection right and if it's on the same pod we can logically infer that it's a data plane, but it but it may not be. It's just those kind of things, so that somehow or another, when we register and we know that there's a cert, that there's um, uh, one of these that are available, we don't, you know, we just coordinate efforts between the um, between the uh, very the, the NSEs that are, uh, uh, you know, that may be co-located. That's so, so just what I'm thinking of. This stuff is actually really important. It's also very very technically detailed. What we may want to do is get together sort of, you, you mentioned Machik, but we would be interested in pulling together a group to go and look at some of this. I know Ramki, you've put a lot of thought into this and so has Tom. Do you guys want to start, you know, sort of putting together a work stream with the MSN, liaison with the resource management working group? Um, well, what, what exactly do you mean by a work stream? What, what, what um, is that? A collection of people who are trying to figure out a useful thing to do in this. Oh, area. oh, okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> It's, it's a big word for a very simple thing. Okay, I thought you meant some kind of formality of tracking with documents or, you know, until we have something ready. Only if you guys find that useful. Okay, all right. <laughs> hey, Tom. Yeah. Back to one of the things you said before. Have you thought about how to impl implement a Multis type interface in NSM? Well, I, I'm trying to get away from trying to duplicate because Multis is specifically about extending um, extending the 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 uh, uh, IP address space for multiple multiple IP addresses spaces within Kubernetes and I, I want to just go on a different path but look at what Multis needs to do to provide that and and if I look at some of these slides they talk about well you know, some of the same things that we're going to have to do, like yeah. these, these CRDs, which don't exist yet. So I'm trying to look at one level below that 
because I think ultimately there'll probably be something of a meeting of the minds between these uh, various projects that are trying to enable uh, high-speed networking in Kubernetes. But but so I'm trying to be aware of what they're doing, but but not get bogged down in in uh, discussions of multiple address spaces because we think we have an alternative solution for that. Um, that's that's just the thinking. I don't know whether that answers your question, John, or not, but um, that's just where my thinking is for what it's worth. Yeah, kind of. Let me think much more. I, I'm just trying to think of if we wanted to have, you know, multi seems a, a simple use case. I, I want to have another IP address in my pod. How do I do that in a, in a different channel? Yeah, I mean, so. this, this is effectively, the, the, the thing that Multis never talks about is why do you want another IP address in your pod? Yeah. There's, always, there's always a why, and it's never talked about in the context of Multis, and we're all about that why. Because we will happily give you another IP address in the pod that actually meets the why you want, but nobody nobody wants another IP address in their pod. They, they want to be connected to some set of network services, right? And that's the, the place that we tend to focus our attention. Right, but underneath the covers, they're going to have to deploy a CRD that may look a lot like ours. That's that's the, the difference. That's where they we might come together. They might, might. Yeah, they might, they might, they might. So anyway, um, back to the agenda. So we did have so somebody had put on here reviewing a pull request two ninety one. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, yeah, Ed, 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 it was me. I basically that's the. Um, uh, the API refactoring. So folks who develops NSC or plan to develop NSC, it's a great opportunity for you to uh, chime in and see if proposed uh, API changes actually gives you what you need to develop your NSC. Because, mm -hmm. all right. Sergey, does this go hand in hand with the API document um, that was merged? I don't remember the pull request at the moment. Yeah, exactly. So basically, it implements that doc with the slight modifications. I, uh, I, I hit some issues, and they were required very minor changes in the doc, which is already uh, at, um, it's already in the updated revision of that doc in the same PR. So you can see what was changed. It's very minor. In general, it's uh, it just implements what we discussed. They agreed on NSM uh, underscore API MD file. So, so I had a chat with Kyle and IRC yesterday about NSEs, and I think he and I agreed, but sometimes it's always hard to, um, an NSE is really just a process which could run as a standalone pod, or it could run in the daemon set data plane, or it could even run in the workload pod. So I say that and then, you know, so Kyle and I kind of agreed on that. I'm not sure MD else agrees or sees it. So, I mean, I, I tend to think about, and this is, this is probably a decent segue towards some of the conversation about the arc docs. So I, I, I made an attempt to try and get us to a logical place here. Um, and this was built off of some of the survey dotted. It's not quite, not quite finished yet, right? But um, one of the things I realized is we, we, we tend to focus quite a lot on the Kubernetes case. And the Kubernetes case is hugely important and it's actually really fun. Um, but but you, uh, you're eventually going to discover that you need to do things like reach out and talk to external components that are outside of your cluster as network service endpoints. And so I sort of talked a little bit about this in, in the generic, right? So you know, look I me, mean, you look at the network service mesh and components in the abstract, and then we go down to how we look at them in the cluster. Right? And in the abstract, you just have some network service client that has an L2 or L3 connection to a network service endpoint. Right? And you, know, you talk about what is a network service. Right? It's you know, the abstract representation of something that you want. You know, it could include all kinds of things like isolated resource access, protection for threats, guaranteed bandwidth, load balancing, proxying. Right? And then it's very focused on the payload. Right, so you're actually focusing on the payload, not the interconnect when you talk about the network service. And then the network service client is anything that wants to connect to that. So an example would be a pod, which wants to connect to a network service. You know, and then talking about all these things sort of in the abstract. And th this gets to your point about the network service endpoint, right? In the abstract, a network service endpoint is just 
something that provides a network service to which you can get an L2, L3 connection from whatever the client is, whether it's a pod or something else. Does that help sort some of this out for you, John? Yes, I mean, it starts to make sense. I mean, it, it's, I was just trying to think of implementation here and I was just doodling to think of, because there's a lot of discussions about how to manage network service endpoints, but if you make them a part of the pod or part of the NSMD daemon set, Imagine becomes easier. It, it adds some more complexity, but I just want to make sure if I did something yeah, um, I mean, they, they, along they, those they, lines, I was, I was not violating any architectural principles. Well, that, that's actually part of why I wanted to write down the abstract, the abstract description, because you know, because we we have been focusing on a particular instantiation of these things very hard, and I think it's a good one, and I think it's good to have focus because we're trying to get to a place where we can show things that are working to people and get more people involved. Um, you know, and, but and in and, and different ways that you may realize that are going to have different pluses and minuses. And you just have to sort of figure out, are there use cases that make sense uh, given that? So for example, you, you gave one example of running the network service endpoint in the, in the network service client pod, right? There are some advantages to that if you have one network service endpoint per pod, right? Because it, you life cycle them together, that, that's convenient. If you have one, if you have a network service endpoint that serves many, many network service clients, right, many, many pods, then that, of course, is a terrible solution, right? Um, and it really depends on the problem you're trying to solve. But I, I think one of the nice things is the framework is actually um, sufficiently flexible that you can explore these possible solutions. And some of them will make sense and some of them won't. And most of them will make sense within a particular problem domain you're trying to solve. Make sense? Yep, makes makes sense. So, that's what I was trying. That's what I was trying to think. Through. I didn't see it called that explicitly, so I was just I was poking to see where. I, I, I very I always appreciate the poking, my friend. Uh, if you go through the NSC Go uh, code, which is a kind of a sample NSC provided with the repo. I mean, that gives you an idea of the interaction between the NSC and NSM, because you will in. Either way, you will have to, your NSC needs to talk to NSM so the rest of the cluster would know that you exist and what service you provide. Uh, and uh, that's pretty much it. So as long as there is a, that piece, NSM plus your NSC existing somewhere advertising, then the rest of the communication and the model is fairly flexible to achieve that. Yeah, I saw that, Sergio. Thanks. I was just trying to poke at it. One comment I will make for people who decide they're going to go read through this, this PR. Um, the, the, the stuff in the list of components is actually pretty well done so far. When you start getting into the stuff where we're talking about like the NSM to NSM API in this PR, that's still somewhat of a work in progress. It's sort of firming up a bit, um, but it's dealing with some of these things like, oh wait, we have to negotiate tunnel parameters back and forth between NSMs. And yeah, like, like someone mentioned SLA, for example, you know, uh, I, I don't, I don't know yet what that should be added, but we need to think about that. Yeah, and SLA is a tricky one because, you know, speaking as a network guy, and I know the other network people can back me on this, um, when you talk about SLA across the entire network, that's a very hard problem. Um, you know, a lot of people, when they talk about bandwidth reservations in Kubernetes, they just mean you're guaranteed a slice for the NIC that goes out of the, the node. And that's not so hard. But if you want to know, I've got a guaranteed bandwidth between point A and point B, that, that gets to be trickier. So, no, exactly. It's actually an, uh, really an NP hard problem. So, by the way, <laughs> if you... <laughs> well, no, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. And, and, and you know, smarter people than me have, have made a good run at it in the late 90s. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Ed, one uh, quick question here. Um, so, uh, wondering, I mean, if um, somebody's looking at it slightly in, in a different way, in the sense, hey, I have some, I've already pre-decided in my overlay communication mechanism. Hey, um, you know, I don't want all this negotiation. I just decided it's all VXLAN. So do we have a way of, I mean, and, and there is already an implementation around it. Uh, do you have a way of plugging into it? Yeah, so I mean, basically, if you, if you have a network service data plane, so think of it this way, the, the, the network service manager actually doesn't do the data plane bits, right? It doesn't. It will be talking 
one or more network service data, mesh data planes um, you know, that, that are available to it. And those network service mesh data planes will have capabilities, right? So if you have a network service mesh data plane that can only do VXLAN, then mm -hmm. you know, say, say you know, the MSM on the, the leftmost uh, you know, network service, you know, the leftmost node here, basically, it only does VXLAN. Well, then that network service manager, when it goes to try and request a connection, the only mechanism that it's going to advertise as being usable by it is going to be VXLAN. And then the network service manager is talking to is either going to be able to do VXLAN with it or not, right? Because you can't ask people to do things they don't do. So, you know, you can bring whatever data plane actually makes sense for you here. Uh, it's just going to do whatever capabilities it has, and those are going to be the capabilities you can do. Mm. Okay. So... I mean, we're, we're got it. So basically, um, basically, what you're saying is there is an existing plugin. It can just come and advertise what it wants, and be, then then it's all good. That's it. Right. Yeah. Basically, right. if you want to use the XYZ data plane, and the XYZ data plane only does VXLAN, then okay, great. That's if that's the only data plane the network service manager has access to, then that's the only thing you can actually ask for, and that's the only thing you can accept. Mm. For. Um, I. I, mm. I I suspect just having spent a lot of time with service providers who have a wide range of variety of things they want, I expect that that you know that the ability to do more than one data plane is going to be valuable, or more than one under uh, overlay is going to be valuable. Because I don't know about your experiences, but I have service providers who want MPLX over GRE, MPLX over UDP, SRV6, Nixon GPE, like all yep. of them. Yep. I, have, I even have some who want MPLX over Ethernet. God help us all, right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Ed, I'm completely with you. So all I was thinking was sort of the both the ways, like sometimes essentially just use one implementation in some part of the fabric and maybe there is some portion which is sort of, you know, uh, maybe another tenant we're using sort of a different one. And uh, so basically it's, it's a mix and match of both sort of more with, exactly the NSMs with some NSMs with, with exactly the same capability, other, you know, more negotiating. There could be possibilities like the deployment possibilities. And, and, and that's a fair amount of the effort that, that I put into trying to specify the NSM to NSM API is sort of the negotiating of the uh, remote connection mechanism. Um, because yeah. that could be negotiation because independent of what happens on Kubernetes nodes, which I think are going to be quite a bit more flexible, you and I both know there are going to be physical boxes that can speak the one or two things they can speak. Yeah. So, all right, cool. Um, awesome. Anything else from any of this stuff um, before we bounce back to um, the... Um, Edwin, if I may ask one quick question, how do you do the... Where is the registration for the data plane implementation? So I missed it maybe. <laughs> We're getting there. So the art doc is a work. Okay, in okay, okay. I'll be, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, no, no. And, and, and this is, you know, thankfully, Sergey was, you know, Sergey's been very insistent about we have to start writing some of this shit down. And I think he's 100% correct. So <laughs> I'm trying to write some of this shit down and, and it's been a little bit of a crazy week. So I know. How comfortable would you be with me sharing this with people at ONS if they keep asking about architecture specifics? You made it, Frederick. That's awesome. Um, so here's what I would say about that, which is the stuff that, that is in, from my perspective, and I'd be curious to other people's opinion, but the stuff all the way down through the section about sort of the network service components in Kubernetes, that I feel pretty solid about, right? That's stuff we've talked about a lot. Um, when you get into the network service mesh APIs, um, the NSM to NSM stuff, it's not, it's quite a bit more solid, but it's not quite fully solid yet. So for, just as an example, um, one of the things that isn't here yet is the negotiation of addressing and routes um, isn't in here yet. Okay, can I, I'd like to make a recommendation, which is, uh, can we commit the parts that we are comfortable with and then continue the parts we're not comfortable with in a separate PR? Um, as long as you give me a brief moment to go and correct the one incredibly stupid thing that Sergey already told me to correct around this dash. Um, I'm, I'm, no rush. 
<laughs> and then I want to put in sort of a very clear sort of D mark somewhere. But yeah. So maybe, yeah, and I'll go. I'll go through it as well to make sure like that it's that I think it's it's clear as well before I share it with anyone. Uh, but I just want to like be able to point people to, towards something if uh, if like if they want to get really into the weeds or something like that, uh, then yeah. being able to point them towards this and say, "Here, start with this, and then come talk to me, and we'll talk about how to get you more heavily involved." Because yeah, I may run to a couple of people like that. Well, and one of the things I'm hoping comes out of this is once we get a little more solid architecture, I hope it gets a lot clearer the places that people can grab a hold of and, and do stuff. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's, you know, Sergey has been amazing in his willingness to wade in and, and write code based on slides. Um, it's been amazing, but, but it's asking an awful lot. <laughs> so, cool. Can we productize Sergey to be a slide to um, code compiler? <laughs> I'm not sure how Sergey feels about that. Um. Yeah, I have a full-time job, so, and it's not this one. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we appreciate all that you do, Sergey. Cool. So uh, anything else on this talk before we go back to the agenda? Yeah, just where's the location of this doc? I mean, I, I know you're talking about committing it, but if we wanted to glance at it, I mean. Uh, it's PR290. 290. So, okay. okay. I impose on someone. I think actually yeah. it, is, it is in the meeting minutes. There is, uh, there is an, uh, an NSM API uh, .md doc in docs, and I believe this extends that yep, this um, is, too. So okay. you can go back to the original and you can see what the, you know, what the pull request is, is, is trying okay. to modify. This patch is building on that definitely. So yeah, and I think it's in the meeting minutes there, so you can pull the link from there. Um, cool. Anything else before we go back to the um, to the agenda? Cool. So apologies, Ramki. I skipped over your interaction with network policies uh, item. Let, let's get back to that. No problem. No problem. We can. Uh, so uh, Ed, it's uh, we have seven minutes left, and we have Frederick. I don't think you will be able to 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 cover last two points in seven minutes. So can we quickly revisit the um, the next week ONS EU stuff with Frederick? I'm free to talk about it if that's what you want. Ah uh, yes, yeah. You mean what's going on in ONS? Yes. Cool. Uh, yes, yeah, specifically and yeah, we can, uh, the meeting chat about points, policy, happy hours. Uh, like several of us will be there in person, right? We can meet and discuss there at ONS, I guess. Yeah. Yep, yep. I won't be at ONS, but Frederick will and Kyle will, so you're in great hands. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so, so those of us who are attending, like me, you know, I schedule in advance as the calendar is filling up quickly. So is there any chance to work out the, the time and space for uh, NSM interactions? I, I'm very interested to talk about, uh, you know, uh, anything, everything that I care about NSM. So for cloud native networking, uh, the current state of the work, gener general discussions, um, testing, benchmarking, comparisons, and uh, so on. Would that be possible next week? Or? Um, so what I'm thinking is maybe we'll just create an email thread of folks who are going to be there in person and then sort of the next change times. How about that? Perfect. Works. So Thanks. we also have uh, on the networkserviceMesh.io website uh, a events page that we're going to be setting up. Yeah, we, we just looked so, at that. But it wasn't updated. Sorry, uh, Frederick. Yeah. yeah so, we'll, so we'll update that. Uh, okay. So if you don't so if you don't have an answer now, we'll keep watching that spot. Okay, thank you. Well, um, and so we're, we're definitely talking about meeting up on Wednesday night somewhere, but I wanna look at some of the venues first to make sure that they will suit our, suit our needs. Uh, and, and also to make sure that they're open and not entertaining a private party. And so, uh, so we'll post somewhere on Wednesday. We'll have the uh, same as we did in uh, Open Source Summit. We'll do a uh, NSM happy hour thing. And we've also requested a unconference session on Thursday as well. So we don't have a time for that just yet. Um, and that's still, that still has to be accepted and they work out the schedule uh, during the conference itself is my understanding. Uh, but ideally, we should get enough uh, people wanting to join in that we should get a unconference session on Thursday. 
So we'll also post that onto the uh, onto the website at the events page once we uh, once we know that time. That would be awesome. Um, the only request I would like to place, if that is at all possible, for those of us who suffer from jet lag and uh, health and try to do their best in healthy lifestyle, my brain stops working after eight p.m. Yeah, no, no worries. Um, and as Wednesday, my, my time schedule, I have three talks scheduled on, on Wednesday, but all Thursday outside of the unconference session, feel free to get a hold of me and Kyle will be here as well. And so we're more than happy to, to help. Uh, awesome, awesome, talk. awesome, awesome, awesome. I only have one talk on Thursday, so Thursday may work. Thank you. Cool. So for... Yeah, for details, that's that's all I have at the uh, at the moment of things that are that are set. So, so we're running up against the end of time. Um, I do want to ask the following question: um, Since ONS is happening next week, do we want to have a um, a network service mesh meeting next Friday? I don't know where everyone is in terms of their travel plans and everything else. Um, I'm I'm available and I'm perfectly willing to have one. The question is, where is everybody else? Well, from my perspective, I would really like to have a conversation with uh, Michael and the team about the testing and benchmarking that we didn't manage to cover today. And uh, ONS is finishing on Thursday. I will be available on Friday. So oh, you're not going to ONS either, Michael. So you're you're on normal normal schedule. Yes, I am. Awesome. Well, I, I should be able to get to it. I, I should be able to get to it, provided I can find a uh, a hotspot. Awesome. So let's go ahead and keep it then. Frederick, it's a networking summit. They are expected to have a top Wi-Fi, no? <laughs> That's what you would think, but uh, they, they one of our part of our challenge is uh, is to get uh, internet through challenging conditions, and so it's also a test. <laughs> Isn't it a problem of too many chefs trying to work on the same the same dish? Yep. Come on. <laughs> and, and as soon as they quit paying the bill, they shut all that there's, stuff there's off. Those problems so. have been solved so many times. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. All right, so I, we're, kind of, we're kind of done for the meeting. We want to make sure we get back to the, the two agenda items, one on the case network policy and actually the other on the NFC on testing next week. Um, and then I'm sure we will have more agenda for next week as well. Cool. Excellent. Thanks Thank very you. much, everyone. Thanks, Ed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.